the Longwood Hills Congregational Church. We are an inclusive spiritual community seeking to live out a more just and generous Christianity. We think faith is less about doctrines and dogmas demanding total agreement, but rather a life to be lived, enjoyed, and given away to others. What unites us is a growing awareness that life is a gift and love is the point. We welcome the entire human family, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. You are beloved and treasured child of God, created in God's image and filled with God's holy breath. So if you are curious and you have come to see, if you are tired and you have come to rest, if you are grateful and you have come to share, if you are on a journey and you have come to grow, if you are wounded and you have come to heal, if you are joyful and you have come to shine, we welcome you home and we're glad that you are here. And so on this Sunday morning, we welcome all of you uh, who are in person worshiping in our sanctuary, as well as we welcome those who are joining us online uh, as we celebrate God's love for all people. And this morning, I just want to lift up um, and thank you. Uh, last Sunday, we gathered our Neighbors in Need special offering. Um, and so far, we've collected uh, $425 uh, for that offering. And if you have not yet made uh, a donation to Neighbors in Need and you desire to do so, we welcome you to do that today uh, using one of the envelopes that we have there in the... Oh, we don't have envelopes. Um, so I guess write a check or put some cash uh, into the offering box in the lobby area as you uh, place your offering there uh, this morning. Um, and we just celebrate the lives that we are able to touch through um, your continued generosity, not only with your finances, but also with your time and many, many talents. So this morning, um, Catherine Dilley as our uh, singer, along with Scott Kincaid and uh, Jim Wagoner and Chris McMahon, um, just to identify who's in the praise band this morning, and let us continue our worship of God with our music. broken and the weak to the desperate and forgotten Lord I'm giving you everything all my selfish plans my greedy hands my hope for the American dream Lord I give my life lay down my pride giving you everything God here in I will tell the world that Jesus is the way. Send me, Lord, here I am. I offer my dreams and my plans. I will give my life a living sacrifice. Lord, here I am. high and you lift it up all the angels singing holy holy i'm broken and undone now an angel comes to touch my lips say your sins are all taken away jesus paid the price yeah he gave his life so father hear your people I will 
tell the world that Jesus is the way. Send me, Lord, here I am. I offer my dreams and my plans. I will give my life a living sacrifice. Lord, here I am. I want to thank everyone um, for this morning as well as the last few weeks uh, and into the future as we are uh, practicing social distancing and wearing face coverings. Uh, thank you so much for your patience as well as your concern and care for each other um, as we worship together. Uh, I mean, it really means a lot that the church pulls together and, and is considerate of um, not only one another as people who belong to uh, Longwood Hills, but also guests that may come and, and be a part of our worshiping family as well. So this morning, I invite you into a time of prayer and just to say and, and be reminded of the increase of cases that are, of the COVID-19 that is uh, all around our country and certainly to pray for those who are uh, infected, um, also those who care for them, doctors and nurses and caregivers, uh, first-line um, uh, workers as well. Uh, just remembering also their families and their friends, uh, as well as those who have lost their lives uh, during this time. Uh, we also pray for our nation as we move ahead and find our way uh, through this uh, together. Uh, there are many, many people that uh, we have within our congregation that uh, have been added to our prayer list, and, and we don't list them on Sunday morning as we are presenting this online, but uh, please know that they are added to our list and they are prayed, prayed for uh, on Tuesday morning when we have our prayer meeting. So I do thank you uh, for offering those and sharing those and know that uh, we are continuing to lift prayers. And that list is growing. It's amazing. Um, the things that people are going through in addition to these times uh, as well. So we need to remember that. Let us pray.
We open our lives to you, wondrous God, on this Sunday morning, in the middle of November, when our thoughts are usually looking forward to holiday times, times of gathering with family and friends and feasting on the food of the season, sharing in the laughter and joy that comes with it. And we are so mindful of the so many in our nation who will be absent from those celebrations. Families who struggle in the grieving of the loss of a loved one or loved ones to this virus. To those who this day are struggling with it and to the many as well who are caring for them often exhausted from hours of working and caring. But your love can see us through this. And even though our holiday celebrations this year may be very different, we are also aware that your people, followers of Jesus, who have shared the good news of your love for all people, have had challenges throughout history. And in this day, this is ours. And so help us, strengthen us to be vigilant and faithful through this time. Not giving in to the cynicism or the sarcasm that is thrown about so easily but knowing that we worship a God of hope, a God of joy, a God who holds everything in your loving hands, and that we can proclaim that, live that, share that now in our daily lives, in our homes, in our places of work, in our neighborhoods, in our interaction, with other people. So in this time, we bring many prayers with us that we lift to you from the silence of our hearts, knowing, trusting that you hear all prayers, whether spoken or silent, And you respond with your gracious love. O oh God, source of life of all that is, all that has been and all that will be. Hear us as we join the voices of your faithful in all times, praying as your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now Shelley Rose will... Uh, come forward and present our children's message. So at home, children gather together, um, and the children here just stay where you are.
right, good morning, friends. I so miss seeing everybody, all of my Sunday school friends, and um, I love to see the ones that are here, but I miss all of you at home, too. I just want you guys to know that. Um, so today, um, our story um, comes from Mark, and it is about two brothers that um, are in the group, in the disciples that are following Jesus, and he, Jesus teaches them about what it means to be a VIP. So some of you may know what VIP stands for. Maybe you know what a VIP is, but it stands for very important person. So James and John, the brothers, they ask Jesus to be a VIP in his group, in his kingdom. And Jesus teaches them what that really means. But before I tell you what he says that means, I want you to think about what a very important person looks like to you. I want you to picture a VIP in your mind. Maybe this is someone you, you see and you're like, wow, they've got a lot of power. They can make stuff happen. Or maybe it's somebody who has really nice clothes and dresses nicely and they have fancy things and they have a really cool car that they drive around. That must mean they're very important. Or maybe it's someone who has a lot of money. Like you see, wow, they, they can get into all of the cool places. They can go wherever they want, whenever they want to, because they have all the money to buy themselves in there and everybody wants to be around them. That must make them a very important person, a VIP. But that's not what Jesus tells us makes a VIP. So a VIP, the way Jesus describes it, is someone who serves other people. It is someone who does things for other people that actually costs them something. It doesn't cost you money, but it does cost you time and it can cost you energy. Maybe, um, maybe you can be a VIP in your family. I know you can actually, because every time you do something really nice really good that takes maybe time out of your playtime, time out of your alone time, time out of your uh, screen time or playing video games and fun things like that. All of that stuff that you're like, yeah, this is for me. It's all about me right now. Taking some of that time and maybe asking someone in your family, can I do a chore for you? Maybe it's, maybe it's their turn to feed the dog. Maybe it's their turn to do the dishes or maybe they can't come play with you until their chores are done or they have to do their laundry or fold it. Those are all things that you can serve in your family, in your community. I want you to look for things this week that you can be a VIP in your family and you can be a VIP in your school or um, at church. We, Lexi was so wonderful today. She was a VIP for us because she lit the candles. So there's lots of awesome things that you can do to serve and be a VIP in this community, in your family, and um, out in the community when you're walking around, hanging out with your friends. Maybe you see something on the ground. You're like, I'm going to stop my day and do something for someone else. So I want you guys to do that. That's my challenge for you this week, is we want you to find one person every single day that will make you a VIP. And you can do something to serve and um, in the same way that Jesus served. That's what he did. The whole, all of the Gospels, when you follow, what is Jesus doing right now? What is Jesus doing right now? He's teaching and he's helping. And that's what he asks us to do as well. That, that is how you become a VIP. Not all the money and the cool stuff, but the serving people. So go out this week and do that for your friends and your family and in your community. Thank you very much. Take the mask off. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I, who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go.
I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. I turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will hold. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them, whom shall I send? I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will hold your And now a reading from Mark 10, 35 to 45. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at, and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the bapti baptism I am baptized with, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Here ends the reading. So thank you, Catherine, for reading our scripture this morning. As we continue, <clears throat> excuse me, our series of messages on the beloved community, perfectly imperfect, and we've taken a look at um, some of the people around Jesus who were touched by his ministry and his life and um, how they were affected, how they transformed, how they changed. Uh, and today... Uh, we're going to be taking a look at James and John. And thank you, Shelley, for such a wonderful children's message. You really re kind of made it so I don't have to preach this morning. Uh, you've explained it. And, and so uh, I'm going to continue preaching because they, well, they make me. Um, I, uh, I know that people will be sitting there going, yeah, 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 we heard that, we heard that, you know. Um, but I think it's, it, it is important, and thank you for explaining it in such a, a neat way. Uh, Jesus is traveling along, and he has a very specific mission. And in this portion of the gospel according to Mark, 
he's headed to Jerusalem to where he will give his life to show how deeply God loves humanity. And in doing so, the disciples, you know, at various times when Jesus would announce that intention, uh, they would react in various ways. And so here it is again. Prior to this passage, he announces once again that he's going to Jerusalem, that the Son of Man must give his life uh, and die. And the reaction of the disciples this time is rather curious. James and John finally get it through their head. He's going to his glory. So now's the opportune time to ask for a favor. Lord, when you come into your glory and into your kingdom, please allow one of us to sit on your right and one to sit on your left. One of the commentaries I, I read in preparation for this sermon said, you know where else somebody sat on his right and on his left if James and John were looking? On Calvary. The thieves were crucified, one on his left and one on his right. Maybe that was a foretelling of what it meant to continue to follow what asking those kinds of favors. That's when he, Jesus said, can you drink the cup I drink? Can you be baptized? Because that's my baptism, is the crucifixion. The cup I'm drinking is my suffering. And you know how people are before we actually go in and experience something. We'll say, oh yeah, I can do that. I got that covered. And then to see it. Now, James and John, as the other people that we've looked at through this series of messages, have um, an emotional program for happiness that they've lived with. And emotional programs, Father uh, Thomas Keating, um, who gave to us the centering prayer um, and, and has done so much, we kind of created or thought up this, this phrase, emotional program for happiness, because that's what we have. This is what we think makes us happy in this world. And Shelley did a great job talking about and delineating each one of those. Maybe it's power and, and position. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's finances. Maybe it's um, uh, knowledge, as last week Nicodemus uh, trusted in his knowledge of things, and, and Jesus said it's not about knowledge, it's about relationship. And in this particular case, James and John, for them it is position and it's status, and with that comes power. If one sits on his right and one sits on his left, in the kingdom, it means they are VIPs, they are very important, and they wield some power. And Jesus brings them back down to earth very, very quickly. He says, well, now wait a minute. So you know that the Gentiles like to have their leaders lorded over. That's, that's what it means to be a leader, is that you have a position, you have authority, what you say will go and people respect you because of what you have attained in this world. He said, but if you're going to follow me, then you will need to become a servant. Man, that cuts into our society as deeply as it cut into their society. Because we put a lot of importance upon those very things, do we not? Someone has a degree to be a lawyer or a physician. And, and please understand, I'm not bashing that in any particular way, but we sometimes give respect that hasn't been earned yet. That's one of the things about, th th there are still people, you might not 
uh, believe this, but there are still people who give pastors, uh, when they find out you're a pastor, that's why when somebody asks me, what do you do for a living? I'd say I'm in life insurance. <laughs> because then I get to hear all the good stories, you know, and, and the conversation continues. It doesn't stop right away. And uh, Judy and I did that recently at a, a wedding reception that we went to, and we couldn't find a seat. And there was one table that was there, and we walked over, and I said, I am so sorry. I said, but um, you're going to have the pastor sitting at your table, and that's probably going to quiet all the converse, good conversation. And the two women that were sitting there said, we're sorry too, because you might not want to sit with us. I go, why? Because we are IRS agents. <laughs> I go, good point. I'm looking for another table. <laughs> People do give us, and, and it always, it not surprised me, but why would you give me respect just because I say I'm reverend or I'm pastor? You don't know me yet. I might not be too good. And yes, in today's world, we are discovering that pastors are very, like other leaders, politicians, all that. They're all fallible. We're all fallible. We all have clay feet, and we're all human. But we think that people who have position and power, that that somehow makes them fulfilled. They find meaning in that and purpose. They find their emotional happiness. And Jesus says, you know, if you really want to live life, if you really want to experience fullness of life, then become a servant. Wow. You know, that's, that's what we are as followers of Jesus. We're all servants. And I, and I love that reference to VIP because, you know, in essence, um, we're all VIPs. In God's eyes, we are all very precious. Very important and precious people because we are the reflection of God. You know, you can go any place on a, any morning where people are gathered together, maybe not so much today in today's world, but normally uh, a McDonald's or uh, uh, um, a pancake house and people, are, you'll find a group of folks that join together regularly. If it's not every morning, it's once a week or frequently and and they sit around the table because they're old friends and they talk about the problems of the world and and it is they solve those problems every morning around with that coffee you know and um i wonder how that would change because that's what we think god is remember the the movie bruce almighty where jim carrey uh wants to be God, so that he can have things the way he wants it. And then he comes to find out that being God's not so easy. But that's our impression a lot of times. I wish I could be God for a day, and then I could change the world, and the world would do what I say. We think that's what God is. And then Paul in Philippians reminds us, no, that's not what it's all. Because even though Jesus was in the form of God. He did not count equality with God as something to be grasped or exploited or manipulated, but he emptied himself. You want to be like God? We want to find our true nature and God's image? Then we become servants. And we reach out and we serve others. Not for position or power or status or recognition, but we serve. To be of help to others. Service to them. To be of a, a compassionate and kind to them. Here's the thing. In all of this beloved community, per being perfectly imperfect is the fact that you and I do not come into this world already put together. You and I have to figure it out just like 
everyone else. As we grow and mature, as we experience life, if, as we have good times and bad times, as we have success and failures, And sometimes we forget we're always a work in progress. And we also forget that God never gives up on us, ever. So we might trip 99 times out of 100. It does not matter. As long as we try that 100th time, get back up and and believe, not in us and our abilities, because we failed 99 times, but we believe that God can bring us to wholeness, that God has our back, that God loves us, that God embraces us, and God never, ever gives up on us. That's the program for emotional happiness that we can trust. Let us pray. As James and John, we too are sometimes misunderstanding your message and we strive for positions of authority from time to time within our church and beyond and you will humble us every time because you will send a message that true service And true leadership is discovered and expressed and manifested in how we serve each other. May we be about that each day of this week. Amen. Day by day. Day by day, oh dear Lord, three things I pray, to see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day, day by day, day by day, day by day.
So let us go into this week, and as Shelley has encouraged us, look for opportunities where we might be VIPs in the sense of serving other people, finding ways wherever we are to reach out, to show kindness and compassion, and to lift up the life around us. As you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Amen. Day by day. Facebook. <laughs>